This is where Sherlock Holmes lives in the Benedict Cumberbatch BBC adaptation. It's not actually on Baker Street, but then again, Sherlock Holmes isn't actually real. Get on your knees! You have three seconds to comply! One! Two! Three. If you wanted me back. You could have just asked me. Now, Vin, many years ago, there was a boy, a man who had a dream. In the 90s, a film, 3,000 pounds. You wrote it, you directed it. Multifacial That's was right. the film that you started. That's 100% right. Not many people yeah. on the red carpet will mention multifacial. This gentleman just did. He must be from Scotland. Yo, I can't wait till I do enough real work, real acting work, but I don't have to sweat commercials. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to see like Pacino doing potato chips or Denzel doing donuts. Don't judge a man by his politics. Don't judge a man by the colour of his skin. Judge a man by his record collection. Super Furry Animals, Fuzzy Logic. Great album. Uh, a, a great album. And, uh, just in case anyone's wondering, yep, it's a great full. Growing up in the 90s was the best time mm. for British comedy you could possibly grow up in terms of the, the, the amount of amazing comedy on TV from... Far Show to Shooting Stars to Father Ted, Royal Family. Harry Hill, Jack Dee, Frank Skinner. Uh, certainly Fantasy Football with Frank Skinner. I think anyone that wears their influences too heavily of hasn't course. maybe watched enough comedy. For me, one of the greatest American bands of all time. Yeah, Pavement. Pavement. It's quite long and it's quite a mess. Stephen Malkmus has gone on to an amazing solo career yep. with the Jicks. Do you have his solo albums as well? I, I don't, not on record. Okay, okay, but, but um, you have on MP3. I have access to Spotify. Okay. Yeah. okay. When I was doing open mic, I'd say the most copied person was Stuart Lee. Yeah. I'd say even when I, well, when I started, the first gigs I did, I sounded like Stuart Lee, because I didn't know what I was, you know, I was a big fan of Stuart Lee would be another one. And you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're, you sound like. Sometimes in life we never stop to think how we got to somewhere from somewhere else. That's and right. here we are at this amazing premiere for you. Yes. The same guy who did multifacial. That's right. How do you look at the journey now when you're at somewhere like this? I still have a ways to go. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. A great writer named Ross Leckie who wrote a book called Hannibal yeah. uh, has been a part of this next uh, promise that I made to the world, which is directing the trilogy of Hannibal Barca. Nice one. So until I get that done, yeah. I'm still working. I've got to ask you, how many people are we talking to here? 46.6 thousand. Yeah. Douglas you? Anderson here with Vin Diesel. We're having a chin wag, we're enjoying ourselves, and we've been speaking about the first film he ever did, which he did for a £3,000 budget, $3,000 budget. $3,000. And look where the big is. This is you, you two could do this if you've got a bit of gumption, and a good work ethic, okay, and you're as good at Vin Diesel. Well Thank you, said, my brother, well said. It's always nice to remember so how he got from A to B to D to C. I guess I say as well, he was a very nice chap, and he seemed to like the um, fact that I was Scottish. Yeah, I, I don't know how I'm going to tell him, I'm only oh, yeah, put his accent on for media opportunities. But, yeah. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a big television. You're a quiet, sensitive type. A little bit crazy, a little bit bad. This is where Ewan McGregor runs into the car at the start of Train Spotting. It also features in Train Spotting too, making it quite the cinematic double whammy. Since starring in The Last Leg, very successful show mm. uh, that you're one of the, the big names on, mm. do people ever come up and ask you, what exactly is your disability? They do all the time, yeah. Um, and um, I think it, now if you Google me, um, then you get, uh, that, that, if you Google me, <laughs> then you get a, uh, that's one of the, you know, you get the words afterwards. I think dis disability is the first one to come up. Next up, well, it goes without saying, Revolver yeah. by the Beatles. Yeah, I had, um, And Your Bird Can Sing as yes. my uh, exit yes. music for my first Edinburgh show. Yeah. Did that so go it's got bad, uh, bad associations. So it didn't go well. I think any, any, no, no, no. It's any music that you choose for before or after your stand-up that you hear every day. Yes, you yes. associate purely with tension. May I pepper our conversation with a personal anecdote? Yeah, of course. So you were presenting Fighting Talk, a yeah. BBC radio show, uh, for a few years, and I am a regular on that. Thoroughly enjoyed working with Thank you, you on you. it. Thank you. And. 
I used to sit there in the studio and sort of look at you and I think, I can't figure out what it is. So you thought... I thought, but it's not the kind of thing you want to bring. Yeah, yeah, so, of course. So how many episodes was that for? Like, quite a few? Twelve. Oh, what, the whole way through? Yes. Oh, really? And I never knew. And oh, wow. Yeah. So you think there's a lot of people doing that? We need someone who can move like them. Fight like them. It's time to be a patriot. I'm asking you, in your personal opinion, what, what, what is the greatest Kung Fu martial arts movie, whatever way you want it. For me, The Drunken Master is a piece of genius. Wow! Sam, Drunken Master. How do you say Drunken Master, Jackie Chan? That's my favorite. Yeah. You're just saying that because are you seriously? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's sorry. I, you, you know, the, yeah, it's Duncan Master. I love this. It's my uh, inspiration for make a movie. Damn it! Damn it! The widow greeting her lover. It's nice to meet another drunken master fan. Oh uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much yes, for your yes, time, sir. Have a lovely weekend. Wow, love is drunken master. The drunk, I know. <laughs> well, it genuinely is one of my favourite kung fu movies of all time, The Drunken Master. I didn't think I was going to find a pal on the white carpet tonight who felt the same, but strange thing happens in life. I tell you what, a lot of strange things happen in Drunken Master as well. Whatever it is you're looking for, you're going to come up short. Does this mean you're not making me breakfast in the morning? You've obviously had all this experience in Bollywood, and now with this film, and no doubt many others, the Hollywood angle comes in. For you, what is the, the difference between the two from an artistic point of view? Um, I, to be honest, I didn't know what to expect before I left India. But now that I've had that experience, I can tell you that it was exactly the same. Okay, Deepika, thank you very much for your time. But what we can take from that is Bollywood and Hollywood completely the same. Thank you, Deepika. Always worth clarifying. Damn, it feels good to be back. If only it came on limited edition white vinyl. Oh, look, oh, it does. Yes, it does. Televisions. I, I bought on limited edition. Televisions. Marquee Moon. I mean, I don't think I've I've listened to hold this yet. On. It's still wrapped. A first on the Douglas Anderson show, where we have one of the biggest comics in the UK unwrapping a record, Television's Marky Moon. As I always say about this album, the album that followed this adventure, not quite as good as Marky Moon, but still an album absolutely worth owning. Worth owning. <laughs>